Welcome to Furniture Flipping for Profit. I'm Cynthia and I post videos on this channel showing you how I take old, inexpensive, or free furniture and then refinish, restore, and restyle it so I can sell it for a profit. I use a variety of ways to change the appearance of the furniture to make it more sellable. I hope you enjoy watching my videos as I go on this journey to give new life to old furniture and make a profit along the way. In this video, I'm going to show you how I was able to take a dining room set that I paid only $300 for and then flip it for $2,500. That's right, I got two, a $2,200 profit on this one dining room set. I'm going to show you step by step what I did so that if you would like to do this type of a flip, you can know exactly what to do. Best of all, there's no painting, stripping, or sanding involved. Just a little bit of work cleaning up and it's pure profit from there. Hope you enjoy the video. The purpose of this video is to show you exactly what I did in order to make $2,200 on a single flip. The first thing that I did to determine high profit items to sell was to do a search to figure out what has sold on Facebook Marketplace. When you log into your Facebook account, you go to Marketplace by clicking on the icon at the top or the word Marketplace on the left. So the first thing that I did was to determine the target market that I was trying to serve. So in this example, I'm choosing Atlanta, and then I chose a 60 mile radius. So you're going to be looking at what has sold within that radius. Since I was going to be buying and selling used furniture, the next thing I clicked on was the item condition and I selected used. Then I clicked on delivery methods and selected local pickup because I didn't want to sell it outside of my local area. Since I was interested in making a big profit, I then sorted by the highest price because I wanted to see what type of items sold for a lot of money. The last thing I selected under availability was sold. I didn't care what they were asking for items. I wanted to know what they had actually sold for. As they say, the proof is in the pudding. So I actually was able to look at items that were sold. Now I know very well that the item that listed here and the price that they have asked for may not be the actual selling price. I may have listed an item for $500, but when someone came to purchase it, I actually sold it for $400. I'm aware of that and you need to be aware of that as well. Now that you have your criteria in place, you can put in your search results the type of furniture that you're looking to have this criteria applied to. In this case, I put dining room sets. And you'll see on these samples here that the prices for these furniture dining room sets is quite high, $2,100, $3,000, etc. And so I knew that they could sell for high profit if I bought them for the right price. So now that I identified a high profit item, in this case, the dining room sets, I researched why they sold for such high prices. So I studied their Facebook marketplace listing. And what I found is that all were name brand sets or they were purchased from a high quality furniture store. They all included a table, at least six chairs and a hutch all listed the retail price of more than $6,000 in the write-up. They all had really good detailed photos and they were well lit and they were well staged. All had a detailed description about the quality of the set itself. And most of them were a traditional style with carving. And was to find a name brand dining room set from a high-end furniture store in near perfect condition because I did not want to have to do any painting or refinishing of the set. I wanted to spend less than $500 for the set. So I guess I was looking for a set that was undervalued by the seller. Something that they really didn't realize the value of what, of what they were selling and were willing to let it go for a decreased price. I wanted something that had an original retail value of more than $6,000 
and I wanted a table, six chairs, and a hutch. It had to be a high quality set worth at least $1,000 on Facebook Marketplace. This is probably the most frequently asked question that I get, where can you buy used furniture? I'm just going to give a huge list here. So if you are already buying furniture used and you're happy with your sources, skip through this section. But I think you just might find maybe some new ideas. Of course, Facebook Marketplace is an excellent place. Um, as you see on these images now, as you're all familiar, there's lots and lots of things on here and they can go fast. So I constantly scour Facebook Marketplace. I sometimes think I spend too much time on it, but that's what you have to do to get the good deals. They go fast. So I check in on Facebook Marketplace as often as I can during the day. Next door, if you've not heard of it, is a website for communities. So you have to join you can only join if you're asked by someone that lives in your area. So it's neighborhoods. Uh, my development has its own next door. So it's that's kind of how it works. I actually found the dining room set that I ended up purchasing on Nextdoor. So when you see things listed for sale on Nextdoor, they're not just within your own community. It's a huge area that they cover. So Nextdoor is a good location, good place to purchase used furniture. At least that's what I found. Garage sales are another good place. They're kind of hit and miss, um, but you can really get some extremely discounted prices at a garage sale. Most people, when they have garage sales, don't know how to price their furniture, it seems. Auctions, uh, in-person auctions or online auctions are good location, good places as well. Your friends can be good sources of used furniture. In fact, they may give it to you or what you could do is strike an arrangement with them that you'll agree to sell them and you get half the proceeds. So they show it you advertise it and you split the proceeds again a good source the recycling center in some cities i've been told cities and, to and towns allow you to bring furniture and then just sit them in an area and anybody can come by and just pick up what they want so that could be a good source as well some people just put furniture out on the curb um, for anybody to take um, some communities have bulk trash pickup days. So if your community has one, then you can just go to those areas before the trash trucks and take your pick of whatever you want. Habitat for Humanity has restore retail stores throughout the United States. They're another good source. Thrift shops that, that are run by churches and nonprofits uh, sell used furniture. Consignment stores can be a good source as well. However, I find that there's a lot of difference between consignment stores. Obviously, you would not go to a high-end consignment stores that's selling very expensive antiques and try to get a good deal. I would go to a consignment store, or I do go to consignment stores that are like trash to treasure type consignment stores. And I've seen some huge dining room sets for $500 or less. Uh, online storage unit auctions, I think are an interesting source. You can see in these pictures here, that it's just like on the TV show Storage Wars. It's a garage unit. It's stuffed full of things and you have to buy everything. The bids frequently are quite low. However, pay attention to the fine print because I, it, the w ones near me have a $100 clean out fee. So you have to pay whatever you put in the auction plus an additional $100. So that, that but that's an option. The return section of some stores can be a good source. For example, I was in Ikea not long ago and they had a beautiful white chest of drawers that was regularly 300 and some odd dollars and they were selling it for $70. I, it was in perfect condition. I could have gotten it and just flipped it in a heartbeat on Facebook Marketplace, but unfortunately I was unable to pick it up on that day and I knew it'd be gone by the time I got back sales, dumpster diving, and no, that's not me in the dumpster, Craigslist. There are a variety of apps that are available for you to list items that you would like to sell, including Five Miles, Carousel, C Plus for Craigslist, Declutter. eBay has an app and you can indicate on it if you're selling an item for local pickup only. So eBay is trying to get into the local market. Offer up is another one and Virage Sale. The Salvation Army and Goodwill also have a lot of furniture, but I've noticed that the prices vary between the various stores. One Salvation Army may be a lot more expensive than the other, so just check them out. 
Shop at the one that you find have the most reasonable prices. And then there are a lot of free stuff apps as well. By networking with the right people, you could possibly get some really great deals on furniture. A good source is realtors. When realtors are working with a seller, of course those sellers are getting ready to move. And I don't know about you, when I'm getting ready to move, sometimes I sell furniture a lot cheaper than I should because I just don't have the time to deal with posting it on various places to sell. And too often I've just donated it which isn't a bad thing because I'm helping people, but at the same time, you can take advantage of that. Network with realtors and say, hey, do you have anybody that's moving? Maybe they have some furniture they want to get rid of. I'd like to come in and give them some bids on the furniture. I might be willing to buy it from them. Another source is uh, junk collectors, 1-800-GOT-JUNK and other places that pick up junk. Talk to them and say, do you ever find any good furniture? Maybe I'd be willing to buy it from you. Apartment managers, when people move out, unfortunately, they leave stuff behind. I can't tell you how much, how many items I've gotten as a result of a connection I have with an apartment manager. Um, a lot of TV media stands, one in particular I got for free, I sold for $375. So that's a good source. Landlords, same thing. They've got tenants that are moving and they left their furniture behind or some furniture and maybe the landlords are willing to sell it to you at a disc, you know, really cheap or just give it to you. Last but not least, I think is the most creative way to get good furniture and that's volunteer at a thrift store, volunteer at a resale store. You're going to get first dibs on anything that comes in, of course, because there it is, and you can offer to buy it before it even goes out on the floor. So far, I discussed with you how I determined a high profit item to sell. In this case, I decided to sell a dining room set. We've also discussed places where you can buy used furniture at a discount. Now we're going to talk about negotiation of the actual deal to purchase the item. Whenever I go to look at an item, I do not ask for a discount at that time. I only discuss discounts via private messages. In this case, they were asking $500 originally for the dining room set. So I negotiated the price down to $400, sight unseen. And then when I went to look at the furniture on that day, given day, I found that there was actually some heat damage on the top that had been undisclosed. I was really surprised and she knew I was disappointed from my reaction. So I looked at her and I said, well, you know, that's going to take some work. I really, really thought that I was going to have to strip down the entire top. I had no idea what I was going to have to do to fix it. Again, worst case scenario, I'd have to fix it by stripping it, the entire thing down and restaining it. So I asked for an additional $100 discount, which I received. So I purchased the set for $300. Every time I purchase furniture, I ask lots of questions prior so that there are no surprises on the day that I show up. I ask for additional photos or a video if needed, if the pictures that are posted on the given site are not of high quality. I never tell them that I'm flipping their item, never. They may assume that I'm going to use it personally, but that's their assumption. I don't lie. I just don't mention that I'm flipping their item. I don't want them to think that I'm making a profit on their item. I, they may raise the price if they think that. I'm always very respectful and complimentary of their care of the, the item, etc. I it, always express my gratitude for the sale and I have a separate LLC for the purchase of furniture, so I'm not buying it under furniture flipping for profit. I'm buying it under my LLC, which is a separate company, and that way the two are separate, and again, they don't know that I'm flipping their furniture. To get top dollar for this furniture, it had to be in excellent condition. So I took great care to ensure that the Potential buyers had no nothing at all that they could complain about when they came to look at the furniture. This particular dining room set, as I mentioned, had a horrible heat stain on the very top of it. I researched carefully how to get rid of the heat stain, and I found that there's a product called Mohawk Plus Retarder No Blush that can be used to get rid of heat stains very easily. I was really pleased to hear about it. Now you're going to hear all kinds of things on the internet about different ways to get rid of it, including putting mayonnaise on it and alcohol and all kinds of stuff. But I 
heard it from several places that Mohawk plus retarder worked quite well and it looked easier than anything else. I was really impressed with how the Mohawk product worked. I just sprayed it on and twice and you can see in these videos how it just disappeared before my eyes. Wow, it was great. Don't touch it, let it dry. And I then two days later came back and I didn't know what was going to happen to the sheen because where I had sprayed it had more of a sheen. So I, after two days, went over the entire top of the dining room table with just Johnson paste wax and waited about 10 minutes and then buffed it off. And it all evened out very nicely. I was extremely pleased and it took very little time on my part to fix. And it looks like a million bucks the rest of the set for the sale, I cleaned the entire set with just plain water and then dried it. There was dust in the cracks and little carvings of the set and so I literally used a toothbrush to get rid of the dust even in those little areas. It made a lot of difference. It made it look a lot better. Then there were a few areas on the set, just little nicks and areas where the finish had come off a little. They were just on the feet, along the legs, just to the edges of the table, just all over the, you know, a, not a whole lot of them, probably 20 to 40 altogether, but enough that they would have been seen by a buyer and it would have been an issue. So I touched up those areas with Espresso Polystain by Verathane. As you notice, this set had dark and light areas. So the Espresso was obviously dark and it worked really well to cover up those areas. I used a little sponge, dipped it in the stain, and then dabbed it on the area and then feathered it with the other side of the, the sponge so that it could just feather into it. I let it dry overnight and then the next day I put Old English Scratch Remover over the entire set except the top. I did not put it on the top. I'd already used the wax on the on the top of the table. I just used a sponge to apply the Old English Scratch Remover over the entire set and it really brought everything back to life. You can see on this next picture on the right I put the Old English Scratch Remover on the left. I didn't and it's actually dull compared to the side with the scratch remover. It just makes it look luscious and beautiful again. All the screws in the legs and the table base needed to be tightened and it was a good thing that I paid attention to that because the first thing my buyer said was, gee, you know, last time I looked at a set like this, it was all wobbly. Well, I knew that those chairs were solid because I had tightened every single screw and made certain that they were solid. Glass and shelves in the hutch, I found that there was some kind of sticky material on the, the door and so I had to use a razor blade to remove the stickiness on there as well first looked at the set, I was very pleased to see that they had the original plastic covering on the seats, their white upholstered seats, and the company's plastic was still on it. And the places where the plastic had come off, they put some kind of another type of plastic over the top of it. But there were a few little areas that had stains. So I like crud cutter. I use it for a lot of different things. So I used a solution of probably a quarter cup crud cutter to a gallon of water and just scrubbed it and it actually lightened before my eyes and every bit of it came off as you see in this final picture. It doesn't matter how much you paid for it, how much work you did on it, if you want to get top dollar you must also market it correctly. People have to be able to find your beautiful furniture. So the way I chose to market this was I listed it on Facebook Marketplace with a detailed write-up and still 10 still photos. Now, quite honestly, I'm a professional photographer, so I know how to take pictures. So I knew the pictures would be good, and they were, quite honestly. I was pleased with them. The video that I produced was posted on my personal channel on YouTube, and it had a link to this video in the description that I post on Facebook Marketplace because right now in my area you cannot post a video. I put it on my personal channel because I didn't want people to know that I was flipping it as I said before. So I did not put it on furniture flipping for profit. I put it on my personal 
YouTube channel. Then I also boosted the listing. I don't know if you've ever boosted a listing on Facebook Marketplace. I've been testing it lately and quite honestly, it's been pretty successful. You have no control over how they're going to list your who's going to see it and how they're going to show it on Facebook Marketplace. But if you boost it, I know for a fact that a lot more people are seeing it and it's really pretty inexpensive. You'll see in a minute how much I spent on this ad to um, boost it. Now, the write-up that I made up for the Facebook Marketplace listing took into consideration what I learned from my original search. Remember way back at the beginning of this video, things that I found, all of those dining room sets that went for a higher price had in common. So I made certain that I looked at this list and took it into con consideration when I wrote up my description for Facebook Marketplace. This is my actual performance report of the boosted listing for the dining room set. You'll see that I reached 1,562 people and the total cost was $6.32. I don't know if it would have sold as quickly as it did had I not boosted it, but I didn't want to take a chance and for $6, it was well worth it to me. These were my objectives in staging the furniture. I wanted to display it so it looked like it was in a real dining room. I wanted to shoot still photography as well as video of it to show the fine details of the furniture and the beautiful carving. I lit the entire scene with an LED light at an angle which caused the glass to sparkle and the furniture to have beautiful tone to it. I actually put china plates in the hutch so that people could envision placing their china in there and I put artwork on the wall behind the set to make it look more like a dining room. This is the final image that was put on Facebook Marketplace. So I think I kind of pulled it off, but wait till you see what it actually looked like in real life in my workshop. This is from another angle, same scene, different angle. And then what you see behind the hutch is a false wall. I made it out of a piece of styrofoam and here's another angle. So yes, I really pulled it off. I could have taken it to my house, but that would have possibly risked damaging the furniture. I just didn't want to do that. This, we have now come to step six, the final step. Everything was ready. It was beautiful, ready to go. I was ready to list it. And all I had left to do was to come up with a price. Well, I think you'll agree with me that de determining a price for something that you're selling is really just a roll of the dice. You never really know the correct price. So what I did in this case was I, I looked at the going price for things currently for sale, for dining room sets currently for sale in my market. And some of them were going for upwards of $4,500. I was really surprised. I hadn't seen that for a while. The other thing I have to take into consideration, and I don't want to forget to tell you this, the timing of when you're selling it is also important. I actually purchased this set in the end of May. And in June, July, and August, here in my area, when school is out, my sales plummeted dramatically. So I was taking time off during that time for personal things and making videos for you, but all of the furniture in my studio was stacking up, the furniture that I had finished. I knew it was because people were not focusing on their home. Kids were out of school, they were focusing on other things. So when it came to this dining room set, I knew that it would be ridiculous to try to sell it during those months because people were not ready to lay down a lot of money on a dining room set when they'd rather go on a vacation. So I waited till after Labor Day to list it. In preparation for the holidays, people start thinking about nice dining room sets. In fact, they're going to start thinking about buffets. So if you're going to flip furniture, if you refinish furniture, start refinishing those buffets because people are going to start looking for those. So I waited until now to sell this item, to list this item for sale. And I also knew that I was in prime time for the reasons I just addressed. So again, I look to see what things are selling for. They're going for outrageous prices up to $4,000, $5,000. I was all along thinking I was going to charge $1,200 for this set. That's what was in my head the whole time I was working on it. And I would have been pleased with that. Making a $700 profit, that would have been great. However, when I actually went to list it on Facebook Marketplace, I thought, 
why not charge $2,500? I thought, it couldn't hurt. The worst thing I could do is come down on the price. So I listed it for $2,500, and within 10 hours, 12 hours, I had three people contacting me. One person called me up, and within 24 hours of listing, they were in my shop and laying down $1,375 as a down payment. They paid $2,500 for this set. So I was exceptionally pleased. I made $2,200 profit on this set, and you can do it too if you just follow my steps. I hope this has provided some information for you that you can use to make money in your spare time or even full time. I would appreciate any comments. I respond to all comments, so feel free to write comments in the bottom. I would really appreciate if you give me a thumbs up on this video, but even better, subscribe and click that bell so that you'll be notified of new videos. I will continue to do, to do videos like this to teach you how to flip furniture by painting it, refinishing it, restyling it, and maybe flipping it without doing any of that, but just making a lot of money. Thanks for watching. Bye.